What is going on, Blade Knights? Clawblade here, and welcome to another Neverwinter Guide video. In my last guide video, we went through artifacts and equipment sets. Today's video, we'll be tackling a very important and complex mechanic, companions. I've been asked many questions about this topic by the community in the comments, as well as my Discord for me to answer, so I thought it'd be better to answer all of them in this video. Companions is one of the larger mechanics in the game and the most needed for builds to work properly. I'll go over how they work, when and where they can be obtained, and how to make them stronger. With the latest combat rework, the companion system has also changed, which is why it took me so long to put this video together. In my opinion, I find this new companion system to be much easier to understand and work with. I'll go over the two types of companions, fighters and augments, how they compare, and offer some recommendations on ones to own, depending on your battle type. So be sure to critical hit that like button if you find this video helpful. Also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Want to catch some live gameplay? Follow me over on Twitch. I play games including Neverwinter every weekend. All right, let's get started. So companions are summon NPCs that provide a boost in stats for your character. Most companions can fight for you, hence the category name fighter, providing extra damage while in combat. Some companions called augments don't fight at all, but offer bonus stats to certain ratings depending on the one summoned. You can tell if a companion is an augment by looking at its combat power list. The only power it will have available is Enhancement. Each companion, whether if it's an Augment or a Fighter, give abilities that can be slotted into the Campaign Bonus page. This page allows for 5 companions to be slotted into these spaces to provide these bonuses to your character. These do not count towards your rating's 50% cap though, instead they're added to your secondary contribution which can boost the given rating to its potential 90% hard cap. All companions have the ability to upgrade their rarity all the way to mythic quality. Upgrading companions boosts their stats and abilities. Each rarity also provides a bolster bonus towards your summoned companion. Common gives 0%, Uncommon gives 1%, Rare gives 2%, Epic gives 3%, Legendary gives 5%, and finally Mythic gives 10 Your total bolster bonus is calculated by adding up your 10 highest quality companions. So, in order to obtain 100% bolster, you'll need at least 10 mythic quality companions. Companions can be upgraded two ways, either with astral diamonds or with companion upgrade tokens. The higher the quality, the higher the cost it is to upgrade. Companions can also be equipped with special companion gear and runestones, which are the equivalent to enchantments on your character gear. Your active companion can be equipped with three pieces of gear at a time. They can be a mix of different pieces, or they can be multiples of the same gear piece. For instance, I plan on running two chain grimoires of the companion at the same time to increase my defense and awareness. So, where can I get my hands on all this stuff? Your first chance to pick up a companion is at level 16 when Sergeant Knox gives you the quest, A Companion. During this quest, you'll get to choose one of four companions, the Man-at-Arms, the Cleric Disciple, the Wayward Wizard, and the Dog. I wouldn't worry too much about which one to choose, as all of them can be purchased for 2 gold each at the Emporium Vendor in the next room. There are many other places and ways to collect companions after you complete this quest. They can be purchased in the Zen Market, from the Tarmaloon Trade Bar Merchant, and the Auction House. There's also the chance they can drop in lockboxes and in final chests and dungeons. A lot of events also offer companions. Their availability is limited to the event it's in though, so once the event is over, you'll have to wait for the next time the event comes around. And I'm looking at you, Frost Mimic, on that one. You may find one of those also in the auction house, but good luck grabbing them as they can be pretty expensive due to their limited availability. For companion upgrade tokens and runestones, these can be snagged in either the auction house or the trade bar merchant. If you're planning to open lockboxes already for the chance at a companion drop, the latest lockboxes available offer a good sum of trade bars guaranteed to drop in each open. Saving up those trade bars for upgrade tokens from the trade bar merchant can be a very good way to obtain them in bulk. Rune stones are a little more than tokens, so you might not be able to grab those in bulk. Companion equipment you can find as you play. For high quality gear that still helps in endgame, I recommend checking out the Master Expeditions in the Awning Portal. They don't always drop, but they are some of the best equipment you can have for your companion at endgame. You can find the full list of this gear in the Undermountain page in Collections. Now I know you're probably about to ask, what companions do you, I recommend for your character? Choosing the right companion is dependent on a few things, though. First, what is your battle type? Are you playing as a DPS, tank, or healer? 
For DPS, you're going to want to find companions that can help you get your offensive ratings to as close to as 90% as possible. Power and critical severity seem to be the easiest to cap to 90%, so fit those ratings in last where you can. For healers, you're going to want to find ones that increase your critical ratings, like critical strike and severity, and outgoing healing. This will help you heal your teammates in battle. Finally, for tanks, you're going to want to look for companions that increase your defensive ratings. In my experience as a tank, I try to find more companions that don't offer defense as their defensive stats, as capping defense for a tank is very easy to do. I tend to focus on awareness and critical avoidance, with some in max hit points and deflection. Secondary dependency for companions is what ratings do I need to increase? Don't choose companions that have stats that you don't need, or bring you over the 90% cap. It's unnecessary to waste those ratings when they can be put into something else. The last dependency is, are you looking for a fighter or an augment as your active companion? Fighter types can help you increase your overall damage in battle, but augments sacrifice combat to provide bonus stats to your character. Stats that could be helpful if you're lacking them. Personally, I like running augments to get extra stats, but this might not be the same for everybody. All companions and their equip bonuses can be found in the collections page, so don't be afraid to research what companions are available and which will actually help you reach your caps. Though I said there are some things to consider before you choose which companions to use, some fighter companions to consider are Zuna and the Abyssal Chicken. They seem to be the most popular because of the high level of damage they deal with their attacks. Zuna is great for single target damage with her ability to cause poison to target for 60 magnitude damage on at will use. The Abyssal Chicken is good for its swarm ability and causing damage over time through a bleed effect, if they have combat advantage. For Augment Active Companions, just make sure you look at what three ratings it gives bonuses to by hovering over its enhancement ability. Each one is different and gives bonus stats to different ratings. This is a large mechanic to go over and hopefully I answered some burning questions you might have had. If you feel I left something out in this video, or if there's a topic you want me to cover in a future guide video, feel free to let me know in the comments section below, or you can ask me in the Discord. Today's community question is, what D&D tabletop campaign do you hope to see come to Neverwinter? Be sure to leave a like if you found this video helpful, and if you want to catch more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to also follow me on Twitch where I livestream every weekend. Your support there is much appreciated. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys and gals, and I will see you all in the next video. Blade, signing off.